Explosive Presence Huawei SLO Matrix 384 Steals the Show at World AI Conference The battle between Huawei's Ascend ecosystem and NVIDIA's CUDA platform at its core, it's a fight for dominance in the AI era's computing power ecosystem. Why were US chips overtaken? Why did blockades become a laughingstock? I've been grinding in the tech industry for over a decade and have seen countless waves of technological iteration, but what happened on the first day of this World Artificial Intelligence Conference even made my jaw drop. Today, I'm going to spill the beans on the astonishing untold story behind Huawei's SLO Matrix 384, the device that made foreigners exclaim, that's why. We'll dive into the core strength of technological breakthroughs, the shifting global market landscape, and the inevitable trend of international cooperation to truly understand the dynamics behind this event. I have technological breakthroughs, hard power speaks, Chinese chips rewrite the rules. Huawei's Ascend 910C chip truly showed the world what it means to see someone in a new light after three days. In the past, the US company NVIDIA was the undisputed leader in the chip sector, especially in AR devices, where its chip's computing power and stability were considered industry benchmarks. Take NVIDIA's previous top-tier AR chip, for example, its computing power barely reached 800 trillion operations per second, and its power consumption was alarmingly high. But when Huawei's Ascend 910C chip debuted, it directly boosted the data to 1,200 trillion operations per second while simultaneously reducing power consumption by 20%. This is like a race. If someone used to run 100 meters in 10 seconds, you're now running it in 8 seconds and with less effort. More crucially, this chip, from design to production, is completely based on our own technology, denying the US any chance to bottleneck us. This is more than just a chip's victory, it's a milestone for Chinese tech companies in achieving independence and self-control in core technological areas, breaking free from reliance. Looking back, since 2019, the US placed Huawei on the entity list and subsequently imposed a combination punch of chip supply cutoffs and technology blockades, attempting to stifle the innovative development of Chinese tech companies in key areas like 5G communication and semiconductor manufacturing. When international public opinion generally believed that Huawei would be crippled by lack of chips in Seoul, Huawei's high silicon laid low for three years, then burst onto the scene with the Kirin 9010 chip, shattering doubts. This chip, using advanced domestic manufacturing processes and integrating over 15 billion transistors, not only achieved leapfrog breakthroughs in 5G communication and AI computing power but also built a completely independent and controllable technology ecosystem with its self-developed architecture and instruction set. The significance of this technological breakthrough extends far beyond the commercial level. In the global semiconductor industry, TSMC and Samsung have long monopolized high-end processes, and the ARM architecture has built a strong technical barrier. Huawei's breakthrough has torn open this blockade, proving that non-US technological forces also possess the ability to disrupt the industry landscape. From the breakthrough of domestic lithography machines achieving 28 nanometers precision to the full process coverage of domestic EDA software, Huawei's chip success is like a spark, igniting the innovation enthusiasm of China's semiconductor industry chain upstream and downstream, driving a full-chain upgrade from material R&D and equipment manufacturing to chip design. While the US was still trying to curb China's development with technology blockades, Huawei delivered a resounding slap with tangible technological breakthroughs. This tells us that core technologies cannot be bought or begged for, only by doing it ourselves can we seize the initiative. This victory not only upheld the dignity of Chinese tech companies but also injected new vitality into the global tech sector, breaking monopolies and promoting healthy competition. In the future, as more Chinese companies embark on the journey of independent innovation, the global tech landscape is bound to undergo more profound changes. 2. Market Reaction Voting with their feet, strength determines direction. When Huawei's SLO Matrix 384 was exhibited at the AI conference, the scene was absolutely electric, the booth immediately became a must-visit spot. And that's not all, the crucial part was the reaction of foreign visitors, who kept exclaiming that's why as they watched. 
This, in essence, is the market's instinctive pursuit of cutting-edge technology. Now, let's look at America's H20. Previously, it could still hold its own in the market thanks to its brand and some technical advantages. But now, in the face of Huawei 384, it can only rely on selling cheaper products to attract those looking for value. And those well-funded Chinese enterprises, with their keen eyes, are now turning their attention to Huawei 384, riding the wave of changing rules in the AI industry. You should know that in the European and American markets, when such top-tier tech products were released in the past, they were basically monopolized by European and American companies. Take a certain European company's advanced equipment, for example, leveraging its technological advantages, it quickly captured over 70% of the local market share in a short period. The situation with Huawei 384 is similar now, relying on its solid strength, it is rapidly seizing market high ground. The market is always the most honest touchstone, it precisely measures a company's technological depth through votes made with real money. Huawei's Ascend 384 AI chip, upon its launch, immediately sparked a market boom. It not only secured billions of yuan in orders in a short period but also attracted close attention from leading internet companies like Tencent and Baidu, as well as strategic clients like national supercomputing centers. This enthusiasm is no accident, the Ascend 384, with its 7 nanometers process technology, 800 top supercomputing power, and fully self-developed da Vinci architecture, comprehensively surpasses international peer products in core indicators such as energy efficiency ratio and model training speed, tearing open the technical barriers long built by European and American companies with its hardcore technical strength. This achievement breaks the Western monopoly that has lasted for over a decade in the high-end AI chip sector. In the past, Companies like NVIDIA and Intel built formidable market moats through patent blockades and technical barriers, often leaving Chinese companies to passively follow. The successful breakthrough of the Ascend 384 not only shows the world China's independent breakthrough capabilities in chip design and architecture innovation but also redefines the technical standards of high-end AI chips with a Chinese solution. At international stages such as the Hanover Mess in Germany and the Consumer Electronics Show in the US, the technical discussion surrounding Ascend 384 continues to heat up, confirming China's shift from a follower to a leader in tech products. The significance of this market victory extends far beyond the commercial level. It provides a new paradigm for global tech industry development only by continuously investing in R&D to solidify technological foundations and building an open innovation industry ecosystem can one remain invincible in the wave of technological revolution. Conversely, some international companies, which in recent years have suppressed competitors through non-market means like patent lawsuits and supply chain restrictions, have instead accelerated the stagnation of their own technological iteration. Huawei's practice proves that true competitive advantage always comes from technological breakthroughs, not market monopolies. This healthy competition philosophy will reshape the development order of the global tech industry. Three international stance, cooperation is the right path, blockade is a dead end. Cisco, as a truly American company, has acted in a truly intriguing way this time. They developed a set of intelligent operation and maintenance platforms for the Chinese market and even used China's local open-source large models. You should know that Cisco used to be quite arrogant about its technology, always trying to dominate the market with its own set of standards. This reminds me of some European companies in the past, when facing markets in other regions, they initially adopted a mentality of technological blockade. What was the result? Not only did they fail to hinder the development of local enterprises, but they also missed huge market opportunities themselves. Later, they changed their strategy, strengthened cooperation, and only then did they regain a firm footing in the market. Cisco's shift this time is, in fact, telling everyone through practical action that blockades simply don't work, and cooperation is the only way out. In today's globalization, Technological development requires communication and cooperation among enterprises from various countries, any attempt to form exclusive clubs or erect technical barriers will ultimately be abandoned by the market and the times.
In the current profound restructuring of the global tech landscape, Cisco's strategic shift is undoubtedly a highly valuable indicator. This network giant, deeply imprinted with the American innovation label since its founding in 1984, from its early rise relying on the Silicon Valley tech ecosystem to its long-standing dominance in the global network equipment market, its development trajectory has always been a typical microcosm of American tech hegemony. Now, facing dramatic changes in the competitive landscape of emerging technology fields like 5G and cloud computing, Cisco's choice to actively adjust its strategy and vigorously seek deep cooperation with the global industry chain is by no means accidental. Looking back at history, technological blockades often bring short-lived, localized advantages, but in the long run, they inevitably backfire on the entire industry ecosystem. During the U.S.-Japan semiconductor trade war in the 1980s, the U.S. briefly suppressed Japan's semiconductor industry through technical controls and trade barriers, but it also led to the fragmentation of the global chip supply chain, ultimately causing U.S. domestic enterprises to miss development opportunities in the memory sector, incurring huge costs to rebuild the industry ecosystem even today. This hurting the enemy a thousand and one self 800 lesson is being repeated in current cutting-edge technology fields such as semiconductors and artificial intelligence. The development of global technology is like a vast river, needing the confluence and integration of diverse forces to surge forward. Just as in the early days of the Internet, it was the collaborative innovation among global research institutions, enterprises, and open-source communities that built today's interconnected digital world. In contrast, the technical barriers currently promoted by some forces are like building layers of dams in the digital river, which not only obstruct the free flow of technological innovation but also create ecological deserts in key technological areas. When knowledge sharing is blocked and talent flow is restricted, it ultimately harms the common progress of all humanity in exploring technological frontiers. Historical experience repeatedly proves that only by upholding an open and inclusive spirit of cooperation, breaking down artificially created technological barriers, can a truly virtuous cycle of the global tech ecosystem be achieved. As the next generation of technological revolutions, such as artificial intelligence and quantum computing, rapidly approach, only by embracing openness and gathering global wisdom can we drive the great ship of human technological civilization forward through the waves. 4. Global Landscape, Computing Power Bipolar, Multipolar Trend Emerges Huawei's actions, seemingly a technological showcase, actually convey an important message to the world. Computing power is no longer solely dominated by a single pole, but is showing a clear bipolar trend. In the past, the United States almost single-handedly dominated the computing power sector, controlling most of the world's top computing resources and technologies. Take supercomputers, for example. Previously, the U.S. accounted for the majority of the top 10 supercomputers globally and was far ahead in computing performance. But now it's different. China's development in computing power is progressing by leaps and bounds, and Huawei 384 is a good example. This is similar to how the global economic landscape was once dominated by a few countries, while now the multipolar trend is becoming increasingly evident, multipolarity in the tech sector is also taking shape. This bipolar, or even multipolar, landscape is a good thing for global technological development. It promotes competition and cooperation among countries, continuously driving technological innovation, rather than a single dominant player creating monopolies and hindering tech progress. From a historical perspective, the computing power domain was long monopolized by a single giant, similar to Intel's absolute dominance in the x86 architecture in the early days of the semiconductor industry. This situation limited the diversity of global technological innovation. The formation of a bipolar computing power landscape is akin to the rise of the ARM architecture in the 1990s breaking the x86 ecosystem's closed loop, an inevitable product of the global tech industry's iterative upgrade. According to IDC's latest data, emerging computing power players have already captured 38% of the global AI chip market, forming a strategic counterbalance to traditional giants. This restructuring of the landscape not only deconstructs technological hegemony but also promotes the redistribution of global tech resources. 
Taking the EU's Horizon Europe program and Japan's post-quantum cryptography research alliance as examples, regional tech collaboration bodies are rapidly rising, forming differentiated competitive advantages in cutting-edge fields such as quantum computing and edge computing. Data shows that in 2023, global cross-border computing power cooperation projects increased by 72% year-on-year, and the amount of code contributed by open-source communities broke historical records. Under the new paradigm of bipolar competition, the struggle for the right to set technical standards has intensified. The competition between Huawei's Ascend ecosystem and NVIDIA's CUDA platform is essentially a battle for dominance in the AI era's computing power ecosystem. This competition forces companies to increase R&D investment. In 2024, R&D expenditure of the global top 50 tech companies increased by 23% year-on-year, giving rise to disruptive technological breakthroughs such as in-memory computing chips and optical quantum computing. At the same time, the International Organization for Standardization ISO, has initiated a special working group on global computing power interoperability signaling the industry's shift from disorderly competition towards shared rulemaking. It's worth noting that a bipolar landscape could also create new technical barriers. Countries urgently need to establish transparent technical exchange mechanisms, similar to the G7 and BRICS nations' attempts at dialogue on quantum communication standards. Only through technical mutual trust and collaborative rulemaking can we avoid falling into a computing power cold war dilemma and truly achieve the healthy development of a global tech community. After reading all this, do you now have a clearer understanding of the global tech development landscape? Huawei's breakthrough and Cisco's shift both tell us that cooperation leads to win-win situations, and blockades are doomed to fail. If you'd like to know more about the exciting content from the AI conference, or have any thoughts on the future development of Chinese technology, feel free to leave a comment and discuss. Follow me to get the latest updates from the tech world firsthand, and let's witness every moment technology changes the world together. Thanks for reading, and I look forward to your insightful comments. We'll see you next time.